So not too long ago, I stumbled upon a story online that really stuck with me and it does to this day. And it's a story about science first and foremost, but it's also a love story, I'd say. Uh, and it really elicited a lot of philosophical questions in me of ethics and identity and the limits of human technology or lack thereof. So without further ado, I'd like you to please meet the marvel of science pet named Cinnabon. Two. Spend a few minutes with this furry friend named Cinnabon and you'll see she has the life. She likes to be combed. But this cute kitten isn't your normal feline. We're not kitten around when we tell you this cat is a clone. Ashley and Brian Bullardick rescued Cinnabon the first when they were newlyweds. At 19 years old, Cinnabon's life was coming to an end. Wanting their precious cat to live on, Brian turned to science. Yeah, they just needed a, a skin sample and a saliva sample. $25,000 later, Cinnabon II was welcomed home. The clone even sleeps where the old one did. So I'm sure I don't have to tell you that my interest was piqued by this story. I mean, hello, it's no secret that I bigly and badly love Nutland with all my heart, and I dread the day that we ever have to be apart and fantasize as well about throwing myself upon her funeral pyre in an act of devotion and eternity and being together for all of eternity forever and ever. So all that said, yes, of course I would think about cloning Nutland, especially considering that funeral pyre thing wouldn't be very pleasant for anyone. But there's just so much ethical dilemma at play here. I mean, on one hand, yes, cloning a pet seems like the ultimate tribute to it, you know? It's just such a lovely, special, unique pet that you have to have it again and no one else will do. However, does that not render the pet less unique if you're just pumping it out like a factory? Like, Nutland 1, Nutland 2, Nutland 3. Is that fair to the pet? Isn't that kind of saying that the pet is ultimately very replaceable? And also, of course, I know a bunch of you will say, you know, there's already pets out there that need a home. You're gonna spend all that money on a pet when there's all these pets hungry and needing shelter from the rain and all? Yes, that's true too. And who's to say that if you didn't form this very amazing special connection with this pet that you won't form a similar connection to another new pet. Wouldn't you be honoring the original pet in the end more by saying, I will never try to replace you? Anyways, I guess these are just the issues that we are facing in this modern age pet-wise, you know? We have this power, but should we use it? I'd love to hear what you think. And just as an appendix here, can we talk about this name Cinnabon? Wow, wow, wow. I love that name Cinnabon. I haven't heard a cat name in a while that I really love that much. Cinnabon, Cinnabon. I love it because the short form of the name, bun, just bun, ending in a consonant, especially like a nasal consonant, it's so easily translatable to a Lind nickname. Bun Lind, Bun Lind. Wouldn't that be great? Bun Lind, Bun Lind. Although I'd hate to be a copycat, so I would probably name my cat Onion Bun. Onion Bun, Onion Bun the cat. And then it would be called Bunland, and people would say, Bunland, that's an interesting name. Is it short for anything? And I'd say, Yes, Onion Bun. I floated this past Elliot, and he said he's not really sure about the name Onion Bun for a cat. 